Hello everyone, and welcome to another Clash of Clans video. Today we are looking back at CWL January for 2020, and looking at an incredible clan. Look at that, 41 stars, and a 1 star, so that's 12 triples out of 15. This clan is called Trungok, and as you can see on the right side of your screen, it's mostly of Stephanie and Dr. Muitaba counts. So that means we should take a look at a couple of the attacks and see how they how they do their war attacks and see like what they do and if we can emulate it. So throughout this video we're going to look at four attacks of theirs. We're going to look at two of their bases which are a little bit funny and we're going to do an attack of our own. So here we have Stephanie against 6 me my 6 me 9 and it's the classic mass e-drag strategy so what he's gonna do here is he's gonna have the queen at the top side at 12 o'clock king at the bottom side along with the baby dragon both to funnel the e-drags from the uh, 10 o'clock side over throughout the base and then along with the warden and the warden ability at very early stages of the attack to absorb any uh, black air mines and to protect all the loons at the same time. So here we have we have one sweeper pointed away and one sweeper pointed towards the e-drags. The early warden ability means that he wasn't able to use the warden on the town hall like you might you might think is normal and he has the RC at the bottom of your screen, taking out like side defenses, and eventually making her way toward the middle, and taking out the last defense with the help of her ability. So, left up are like five E drags, something like that. Really crushed this base. So we have the E drags. We have the Heroes for Funnel, we have the Warden protecting the E-Drags, and we have the RC taking out side defenses at the back end of the attack. So that is the first one down. Let's take a look at one, uh, three, three more. So we have, again, the exact same strategy, well, the exact same army composition. All the max heroes, we have the e-drag at the top for funnel at this time and we have both heroes on the on the left side this time for funnel early warden ability absorbs all the black mines the eagle shots the early eagle shots but doesn't take into account the town hall so it's very interesting that he decides to use the warden ability early so early in fact that it doesn't help with the town hall at all so very strange and then with these compact bases it's really it's really easy for the chains to get through the entire base at six o'clock we have the RC and takes out the entire well takes out the Tesla farm at, at the right hand side with her ability and now we're left up with all four heroes and like six or five e drags. Again, crushing this sort of compact, um, traditional anti three star base. Let's take a look at two more. So this is Stephanie again, this time on Jason. And we're gonna look at a sort of like this is the most spread out base I could find out of the map. Um, so they were mostly the compact traditional anti-threes that you would usually see. Both heroes at 12. You have the Warden and the E-Drags at 10. Early Warden ability and the chains just take care of the base. Even though this is a CWL attack, he's so confident in the attack that the E-Drags just go through the base and he has no plan for the Town Hall at all. Just expects all the e-drags to get through the entire base 
with enough left over to take out the town hall, and he does. You have six e drags taking out the town hall, and it's just madness. Really madness again with you know four or five, like five e drags left up at the end of the raid, and we have this time just the BK up. So a lot of the strength of this attack comes from having your heroes up at the end. It's very similar to Mass Miner or Mass Dragons or anything else at lower Town Hall levels, where you just have massive troops in the middle and you have funneling on the outside. So it's always stronger if you have heroes left up at the end of the raid, so they can benefit from the tanking of the troops that are inside the middle while they can flank the outside defenses and take less damage than they would if they were just on their own. So here's the final base, and it is the Vala base from the World Championship. So again, he's going to come in from the top left side, and with no regard for the Town Hall, just going to accept that it's that the e drags are going to get there. This time he uses the Siege Barracks on the left side instead of the Stone Slammer in the middle. So that's a very interesting move. I think it's because the heroes at the top side are very valuable in taking the King and the Air Defense and moving on to the rest of the base. And at the bottom side, he needed the Stone Slammer in order to get the Royal Champion that was in the left side. So the P.E.K.K.A. and Wizards took care of that. Now we have an E-Drag coming out of the CC, but it's not going to do much good until it gets to the uh, Tesla farm. So by that time, the E-Drags, the inside E-Drags already got to it, but it still helps out. And we're left up with two heroes, uh, Royal Champion also, so three heroes and like six E-Drags yet again. Six E-Drags left up at the end of the raid. So it was not like, it's not like those bases were totally picked. It's not like those four bases were cherry picked. This strategy was used on every single base in the lineup, all 15, and ended up tripling 12 of them. So given that this was earlier in the season, uh, earlier in the year, a uh, couple of weeks ago, so not all the bases were maxed out. And I believe this clan carried maybe one or two Tunnel 12s as well. Or like really low Tunnel 13s. So here's my base actually. Stephanie's running it. And we'll see again one of the bases I highlighted in the base link video earlier in December. Here by Stephanie Dr. Mutaba. This one's actually a Novo Maudo base if you were wondering from the link video. It's a really good one. And moving on. So, here in King Jeffrey, we're going to take out these last two bases, but I'm just going to do the one with e drags. So, we have the e drag comp, and this is the base. It is the Shenzhou base from the World Championships, I believe. So, how we're going to do this is we have the funnel at 12 o'clock with the Queen. Funnel at 9 o'clock with the king. And then we're going to have all the e drags at the top side. And they're just going to go straight down the middle of the base. At the bottom side, we'll have the stone slammer and the royal champion to take out the air defense and to distract the stone um, scatter shot. And then everything's just going to converge on that last air defense at 4 o'clock. So that's the plan, and let's go in. Starting with the heroes for funneling. Queen's going to take out the first air defense. And King is clearing the way for the second. All the loons, all the e-drags, and the warden on air. 
prepare for an early warden ability. But I want to have these rages down first. So there's a little bit more extra extra oomph to the warden ability. So now we have to place our freezes correctly. Town Hall and Scattershot in that one. You have the RC and the Stone Slammer at the bottom. RC takes out the air defense, and then the Stone Slammer has a lot more uh, a lot more staying power. All the E-Drags are clumped up on one on the Queen. So those chains are gonna get massive value. Now all we have is we have like six E-Drags, we have all our CC loons. And we have a freeze and a rage spell to take out this last air defense, and that is it for the base. Really crushed it. That is like 60 drags left up, just like the Stephanie attacks did. And this is a really crazy strategy. This is not normal. <laughs> this is not normal Clash of Clans for us. I know this use, this composition worked really well for the Stephanie and Dr. Muitaba whoever they are at the top of the leaderboards, but it's really hard to, like, grasp how strange that really is. But, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something, I've been Raised Gaming, and I'm out.